Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, PEBC Drive. In today's session, we are going to talk about pawns. Before moving to pawns, let's have a quick revision of medulla. For more details of medulla, you can go through our previous lecture, where we have explained anatomy and physiology of medulla. So, the brainstem is the part of the brain between the spinal cord and the diencephalon. It consists of three structures, medulla, pons, and midbrain. Focusing on medulla, it is located superior to spinal cord and inferior to pons. Anterior aspect of medulla is pyramid, which is formed by corticospinal tract. It controls voluntary movements of limbs and trunk. Superior to the junction of medulla with spinal cord, there is crossover of neurons, known as decussation of pyramids. Which probably explains why each side of the brain controls voluntary movements on the opposite side of the body. Now, just lateral to each pyramid, there is olive, containing, inferior olivary nucleus. It regulates the activity of cerebellar neurons, by providing instructions which is used by cerebellum to make adjustments to muscle activity as we learn new motor skills. Next is nuclei for vital functions. So medulla contains, cardiovascular centers, which regulates the rate and force of the heartbeat and the diameter of blood vessels. And rhythmicity area, which adjusts the basic rhythm of breathing. Medulla also controls reflexes of, swallowing, vomiting, coughing, sneezing, and, Hiccuping. Talking about the posterior medullary nuclei, so, there is gracil and cuneate nucleus, which is associated with sensations of touch, pressure, vibration, and conscious awareness of position. Nuclei for sensory pathways, like taste, hearing, and balance are also present in medulla. At last, medulla has nuclei for cranial nerve number, 8, 9, 10, 11, and, 12. Hope you enjoyed the quick revision of medulla. Now let's start today's session, that is, anatomy and physiology of pons. So, the pons lies directly superior to the medulla, and anterior to the cerebellum. It is about 2.5 centimeters long. Here, you can see that an image, pons is just superior to medulla inferior to midbrain, and anterior to cerebellum. As its name implies, the pons is a bridge that connects different parts of the brain with one another. These connections are provided by bundles of axons. These bundle of axons are part of corticopontine tract. Here, cortico means cortex of cerebrum, and Pontine means pons. So, neurons coming from cerebral cortex to pons forms this corticopontine tract. Moving on, like the medulla, the pons also consists of nuclei, sensory tracts, and motor tracts. Signals for voluntary movements, from motor areas of the cerebral cortex, are relayed through several pontine nuclei into the cerebellum. As we discussed above, about corticopontine tract, here in image you can see, the neurons extending from cerebrum to pons. From pons, these neurons are going to cerebellum. It means pons is connecting, cerebrum to cerebellum. Now, in this image, you can see, corticopontine fibers coming to pons, and fibers, or, Call it neurons, going to cerebellum. Remember, cerebellum is connected to brain stem via three pair of peduncles. These are, superior cerebellar peduncle, middle cerebellar peduncle, and, inferior cerebellar peduncle. Middle cerebellar peduncle is connecting cerebellum to pons. Which we can see here. Hence, this image shows, 
the connection of cerebral cortex to pons forming corticopontine tract, and pons to cerebellum forming middle cerebellar peduncle, which controls voluntary movements. Pons also contains vestibular nuclei, that are components of the equilibrium pathway, from the inner ear to the brain. Here, in image, you can see, sensory neurons coming from inner ear reaches to pons. Moving to next nucleus. So, other nuclei in the pons are, the pneumotaxic area, and, the apneustic area, of the respiratory center. Together with the medullary rhythmicity area, the pneumotaxic, and, apneustic areas, help control breathing. Here, in image, you can see, both pons and medulla, with respiratory centers. Pons contains pneumotaxic, and, apneustic areas, and, medulla contains, dorsal respiratory group, and, ventral respiratory group. For better understanding, let's look at the next animation. Now, let's have a look on what happens during quiet breathing. So, medulla contains inspiratory area and expiratory area. While the inspiratory area is active, it generates nerve impulses for about two seconds. The impulses propagate to the external intercostal muscles via intercostal nerves and to the diaphragm via the phrenic nerves. When the nerve impulses reach the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles, the muscles contract and inhalation occurs. Remember, even when all incoming nerve connections to the inspiratory area are cut or blocked, neurons in this area still rhythmically discharge impulses that cause inhalation. At the end of two seconds, the inspiratory area becomes inactive and nerve impulses cease. With no impulses arriving, the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles relax for about three seconds, allowing passive elastic recoil of the lungs and thoracic wall. Then, the cycle repeats. The neurons of the expiratory area remain inactive during quiet breathing. However, during forceful breathing nerve impulses from the inspiratory area activate the expiratory area. Impulses from the expiratory area cause contraction of the internal intercostal and abdominal muscles, which decreases the size of the thoracic cavity and causes forceful exhalation. Now in pons, there is pneumotaxic area and apneustic area. Apneustic area, sends stimulatory impulses to the inspiratory area that activate it and prolong inhalation. The result is a long, deep inhalation. Pneumotaxic area transmits inhibitory impulses to the inspiratory area. The major effect of these nerve impulses is to help turn off the inspiratory area before the lungs become too full of air. In other words, the impulses shorten the duration of inhalation. Remember, when the pneumotaxic area is more active, breathing rate is more rapid. Now, let's have a look on. What happens, during forced breathing? In forced breathing, inspiratory area, sends impulses to accessory inspiratory muscles, resulting in forced inspiration. Inspiratory area also activated, expiratory area. Expiratory area, sends impulses to contract expiratory muscles which are internal intercostal muscles and abdominal muscles, resulting in forced expiration. Now, talking about apneustic area and pneumotaxic area in pons. Pneumotaxic area inhibits inspiratory area and results in rapid breathing.
apneustic area, stimulates the inspiratory area, resulting in long, and, deep, inhalation. Moving on. The pons also contains nuclei, which are associated with the following four pairs of cranial nerves. Trigeminal nerves, abducens nerves, facial nerves, and auditory nerves. In image, you can see, all four nuclei in pons. Now, let's have a quick revision. So, pons is located anterior to cerebellum superior to medulla, and inferior to midbrain. Pons contains vestibular nuclei, which is part of the equilibrium pathway from the inner ear to the brain, and respiratory nuclei. Under respiratory nuclei, there is the pneumotaxic area, and the apneustic area. Together with rhythmicity area of medulla, they control basal breathing rate. Lastly, pons contains nuclei for following nerves. Trigeminal nerves, abducens nerves, facial nerves, and auditory nerves. For more amazing videos, kindly subscribe our channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Thank you.